Yeah. Well, I, if you want to talk about uh, horror in a kid's movie, because God bless the 80s, uh, but Return to Oz, mm-hmm. man, that movie is nightmare <coughs> fuel. You, you think, you know that parents took their kids who would love Dorothy, you know, the original Wizard of Oz from 1939. <laughs> Come on, kids. And they get in there. Race. And then this woman's got eight million heads <laughs> that are all screaming from cabinets, and she's holding up her own head. Ah! You're like, whoa! <laughs> I want to see somebody dancing on a yellow brick road. This is not what I had in mind. Those, those dudes, thought- the wheelers with the with where they had the wheels on the on their hands and yeah. on their feet, and they were all cackling and laughing like the Joker. Oh my god! Wow! Yeah. <laughs> That Have you seen it, some, Cecil? Yeah, that, that brought back some, uh, some repressed memories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glad I could help. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done a very good job of forgetting that myself until just now. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, God bless that. That's, this was a children's movie rated PG. Come to think of it, so was Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking, of, speaking of things meant, to, you know, set through in the 80s, that scared the hell out of me was the damn TV movie the day after the, the nuclear Armageddon <laughs> movie that we all sit through at the time. Uh, Get out of my yes. house. That was scary. I, see, I'm going to say we can beat that because in Britain we had the version which was, um, it was like a, it was the, the same animator who did the snowman. And we mm-hmm. had an animated version of two old couple who live sort of somewhere and, and the radiation hits them and slowly kills them. But because it's like a cartoon, you're thinking, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, living in the countryside and they're yeah. slowly dying and everything else. And at the end of it, they finally do die. And it's like, oh, right, no, I'm going to need therapy now. Thanks for that. <laughs> Uh, and, now, and now and now we get to relive the 80s all over again via yeah. uh, you know, yeah. the Cold War's back, inflation's back. This it's is not right. the member berries I was looking for. <laughs> you know, I knew that we knew that. I remember, 80s, I remember that nuclear 80s, radiation. <laughs> you know, you know the eighties nostalgia has been hot lately, but you know I didn't didn't really want all of it back. You know, yeah, yeah. I wanted the good, not you know everything. Yeah. I wonder though if like we would get an updated uh, like day after uh, if, if somebody would would put something like that together to kind of. Because uh, right now they're a little too rah rah on nuclear war. We need people to be like, no, nuclear <laughs> war is yeah. is really, really, really scary. Like, yeah, I, I'm just mystified why the left is all for it. It's like, weren't you guys anti war just like ten minutes ago? What 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 happened here? Oh, you know what? Their, you, me- you remember? Mind I just quickly, change your underwear. I just remember. You guys remember that one, amazing Grace and Chuck about the boy it goes on strike from school it was an anti-war movie you know anti-nuclear you remember that one am i the only one that remembers that one i I know the name i never actually saw it yeah so this boy decided you know he watched a nuclear war propaganda piece he's like oh we should disarm and i'm not going to school until we disarm and then they're like oh okay and then it turns into this thing and a basketball player named and the Amazing Grace is his nickname. Joins in and won't play basketball, and it turns into this whole thing. And and uh, flowers, and you know, the whole world's like, oh, we won't do this no more. And I think the basketball player dies in a sabotage plane wreck because they're it's you know the the military industrial complex doesn't want their nuclear missile gig taken away. I don't know. It's anyway. It sounds was like, like a, <laughs> sounds like yeah, you treated nuclear war as seriously as Superman four. Yeah, it was, a, it was you know, it was pure propaganda. You know what I mean? It was that, like, well, oh, we, if we did, it was that weird at the time, and I'm sure you guys remember, it was that weird mentality of, like, if we just unilaterally disarm, the Russians will too, you know? Yeah. The, com- <laughs> the communists that's been trying to kill us for 50 years, of, well, they'll just say, like, oh, well, shucks. Are you going to well, disarm t- your, your nuclear weapons as well? Yeah, we will do that. <laughs> <laughs> And it, and it like the the episode of The Simpsons where Homer's putting the flowers into the guns, and then they yeah. shoot him, and he's got the he's got the flowers stuck in his head. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you something about the day after. Um, it takes place in, in Kansas City and Lawrence. I live here. I I'm familiar with a lot of those when they did on location shots. You, you know? just do- so, you just doxed yourself, bro. 
<laughs> yeah, we're 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 seven thousand square miles. Come and find me. Uh, but I'll just have it's... to listen to the guy screaming every time a new Star Wars movie comes out. It won't be that hard. <laughs> yeah, <I'm kidding. laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's just it was it really hit home, and I remember them. You know, we were all talking about it in, in junior high because that's it was like, oh, you see Lawrence, you see the wash, you know, the Liberty Memorial and all that. And then they nuked everything and nuked Kansas city. We live here, you know? So that, it was, it was a little harder, it, more traumatizing for me than I think maybe the average person, just because I knew all these places. Oh, of course you were traumatized <laughs> more than anybody else during the cold war. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, I, oh, just because your dad died. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, did, I'm any of, that... did any of you guys get a a propaganda film in your school where they had the the idea was is that Russia had taken over the United States and a bunch of uniformed Ruskies come in to start teaching class to the kids and by the you know like there's this one kid who's like kind of a holdout but they start telling them all the wonderful things about communism and by the <laughs> end of it they get. They get all the kids to cut up the American flag and throw it out the window. I'm like, I I don't know if that really did anything. I, I was I'm kind of <laughs> shocked that they showed that kind of thing in school when I look back on it now. All I gonna... all I remember is watching these very semi gruesome don't drink and here's what'll happen to you if you drink before prom night when we were seniors and blood <laughs> Your runs arm red is from yeah. a tree. <laughs> blood runs red on the highway that kind of thing. I'm just oh, okay. Say that yeah, I'm, driver's I'm gonna... education film, scariest yeah. things they ever showed us. Mm. Well, yeah. I, not to not to say as a British person I do you, but Threads. We don't care. In, no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it was made in 1984, and it was set in Sheffield, which is like Middle England. And a nuclear mm. war happened, but only a few bombs landed in in like one in London, I think it was. It's because it's not worth. There's nothing in England worth bombing. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. It's a complete it's a complete non threat to the rest of the world, you know. Who cares? We are at the moment. But, but with it, the, the difference between this one was is this actually goes off to about like fifteen, sixteen years later after the actual mm. nuclear war. And the, the I the, I because I, I watched it again last year, because funny enough I watched like the day after tomorrow and on and, and all these other ones, and I was thinking, Oh, let's let's have a little fest of you know, nuclear war <laughs> propaganda movies just to cheer myself up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but threads at the end of it basically um one of the women is pregnant when the war goes off and she has the baby then the baby grows up in this england where there's nothing growing and food is scarce and people are fighting each other and stuff and she gets to about 16 she can't speak any english <laughs> she sounds like matt <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, he's not here so don't matter <laughs> but i mean she speaks she gets raped and then she gets pregnant, and the final shot of the movie is she's on this bed, and this doctor's telling her to push and stuff, and he pay, basically pulls out this stillborn baby it's a and maggot. gives it to her, and she, literally, and she's screaming, and it just cuts in the end credits roll. And it was just like, huh, like you can't imagine a worse kind of ending to anything. It was, it was horrific. It still is well, really, really bad. Yeah, the baby threads is, is, threads is a really tough sit. Yeah, it's it's, it. uh, Is it as bad as the ending birth scene in V, the TV series where she's gives birth to the lizard? Oh, I was thinking that. Oh, no, that is a good one though. That is a belter. I was terrified. There's there's a funny story to go along with that. uh, If if um, to kind of make funny uh, because. Uh, one of the prop guys, I don't remember the, the exact 100% story, but essentially one of the prop guys that worked on V also worked on ER. And so they were doing a, uh, a pregnancy, you know, a, a delivery in ER. And one of the prop guys for the baby, he put in the, the V alien baby. <laughs> so all the actors, they're, they're, they're there, you know, expecting a prop alien, you know, prop human baby. To, and here comes this and they're all, ah! Yeah, so. <laughs> That's oh, pretty funny. Yeah, I was going to V baby twist. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. The V baby, the V baby. I remember this was one again. We're all talking about in school the next day, but the V baby. Everybody was laughing their asses off with the, about the lizard baby, but the the human baby that stuck out its forked tongue. <laughs> that mm. that actually was a little unsettling. Yeah, that was a little. <sighs> what about the the maggot baby from the fly? That was pretty. Yeah. That's yeah, a pretty that good, good one too. 
That was a good one, but I mean, could, with everything else that went on that movie, that was just one of the many. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, yeah, the maggot baby, you know, he's he's ripping his fingernails off, he's vomiting on the dude's arm. You know. Which is that melting. That still works and... to this day. Still it's yeah. settling to this day. As far See, as body I'm going to say, I'm going to say the original Fly, again, was one of those ones that I saw far too young. My dad had it on his <clears> mill. And the end of that, where the the fly has got the what the the human head and the human arm, and it's trapped oh, in the spider's web. Talking about the one in the fifties. Yeah, yeah, the original. original. Yeah. And it's like going so so so, and yeah. the spider attacks, and it's just oh, that was that was really scary. Again, as a kid, he, he, I don't he know kills what my it. Dad was trying to do to me. <laughs> he <laughs> yeah, kills he, it. Throws the yeah, he, throws the rock on it. Yeah, that's what I was. He put mercy. Cecil, didn't you do a video on the 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 fly the Cronenberg fly sequel? Like I did. Pretty indi- I thought I so. did do the one. I actually want to do one kind of covering all of them, like like the original, the the remake, and then the sequel. Because there's all they like. I mean, I kind of goofed on the second one, but uh, the second one is is legit good. It's uh, you know it was back before I really started doing the exploring videos, but I think the second one. I mean, because it was Chris Wallace and and they were doing a lot. I mean, they had some. The one dude gets gets his face. He peels his face off. Like there's some. Mm-hmm really horrific uh like, <clears throat> like violence in that one yeah and you know not not on the level of the first one but still like or, or the first remake and they're talking about remaking it again and it's like no you just you'll never mm. be able to to do what what cronenberg did it's just it's not just don't waste your time oh i'm sure cg can go to the level of of realism that we oh had yeah before. <laughs> no, but they just you will never, like I say, it's with some movies when when they go to remake it, and you just think, no, just no, 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 just mm. no, don't the do it. The thing, twenty eleven, anybody? Mm, yeah. Well, that that I did a whole thing on that. That was that was a student like they did the entire movie practical, and then there was a producer who came in that wanted it to be CG, and they only had I think like a few months. And, and it just that's that whole movie turned into such a disaster. Would, would it would you think it would have been a better like how much better of a movie would it have been had it because the story, you know, there's some. Oh, there's stuff about it. but they they changed the story, too. Yeah. Like, oh, did they? Yeah. The, the whole ending is completely different. Um, there was, uh, I mean, the thing about the, um, there, there was the pilot, they, they, they get on the ship and they find the pilot alien who was, uh, the one, you know, who was the last remaining survivor of the ship and how, uh, it kind of explained that the thing was not the alien. The thing was actually, uh, like this, this, uh, pilot was capturing different aliens from different planets and the thing was one of them that they captured that escaped that assimilated the crew and i mean there's this whole i mean a really awesome story that they completely mm. removed and you know drastically changed it that's so we'll... a great idea because i always yeah. thought it was bizarre that this basically this this creature that didn't seem to have any or very little intelligence more like a rat could could make spaceships you know, mm. so I yeah. like that idea. Well, if you could, if you if you could uh, imitate any life form, eventually you would imitate some highly advanced race and know how to operate. You know, because <laughs> yeah. it, obvi- it obviously takes yeah. in all their knowledge and every, all their memories. So, not really. I mean, think how smart it would be. In fact, it would make more sense what Cecil's saying because if it was the the original creature that invented the, uh, you know, the the space travel, it would not have give itself away so easily maybe on the i don't know that's going a little too i don't know yeah it, it's well, i don't want to pick at it now i don't want to i don't want to ruin myself before, for movie. <laughs> before we yeah don't logic yourself into a oblivion yeah. thank you for watching this excerpt from outpost frequencies tune in live every sunday at noon central time or six o'clock uk time And also, remember to come to LastMovieOutpost.com for all your latest in movie news, streaming news, and everything cool about film. We are the cool news now. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next stream.